If you smell what the rock is cooking. Vince McMahon sells the XFL to The Rock for $15 million. That statement is incredible in and of itself. But when we look back on it as the next incarnation of Blockbuster refusing to purchase Netflix because they didn't think it was a good business decision, or is the XFL always doomed to failure no matter who runs it? Let's take a look. The news has been trickling in all day, and so now we're going to give you the most up-to-date reporting that we have. The Rock is purchasing the XFL for $15 million. In fact, it's him and a couple other people, including his ex-wife and uh, a company that he's been affiliated with in the past. So let's get to the details of the deal. Uh, this is a statement, quote, the acquisition of the XFL with my talented partners, these people. Uh, is an investment for me that's rooted deeply in two things, my passion for the game and my desire to always take care of the fans. Right off the bat, what that tells me is The Rock is planning on playing football, on continuing the XFL. We have very little uh, indication of you know what, what he's thinking if he was just purchasing the XFL for the branding or if he intended to actually play football. This, to me, suggests that The Rock intends on having the XFL play games again. We continue the quote, with pride and gratitude for all that I've built with my own two hands, I plan to apply these call these calluses to the XFL and look forward to creating something special for the players, fans, and everyone involved for the love of football. Yeah, I think the XFL is coming back. I think the XFL is going to return to the field after Vince McMahon declared bankruptcy, after uh, COVID-19 hit and uh, the XFL was forced to cancel its season, which really sucked because I was having a lot of fun with it. I was really enjoying it. Now, uh, this, this, The Rock purchasing it, obviously The Rock has a background in football, and then of course he went on to be one of the biggest professional wrestlers on the planet, and now he's the biggest actor on the planet. Um, so, you know, this is probably chump change to him, $15 million, and this company that he bought it with, actually, interesting enough, I want to take you to this article from CNN, and they kind of talk about this this company that he purchased it with, uh, Redbird. They uh, recently filed an initial public offering of a so-called blank check firm named Red Ball Acquisition. So Redbird is the company uh, led by this other person that The Rock mentioned, uh, Jerry Cardinale. Cardinale? I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, this uh, Red Ball acquisition, uh, that's the company. They will raise money to buy sports assets and take them public. The Special Purpose Acquisitions Corporation is co-chaired co -chaired by Cardinale and Billy Bean. I mean, if you've seen Moneyball, uh, you, know, uh, you know who that is. And uh, so this company clearly uh, is serious, and The Rock is serious, and... You know, obviously, The Rock uh, has made has made it very clear that he loves football, and and he want, he he keeps bringing up the fans. We want to do this for the fans, which to me is the smart play right now because the XFL. Uh, when you look at the ratings, the way that the ratings started, and then kind of tapered off, what you saw was kind of you know as someone who makes videos for YouTube, it's exactly what you would expect to see from a YouTube video series, where that first one, week one of the XFL, episode one of the series is your biggest draw and in the XFL's case it got over 3 million viewers it did huge ratings and then it kind of started to taper off a little bit as the season went on which you would expect and then by the end uh, what you had was the true fans that was what was left was the true XFL fans and it was hovering right around right around a 1.0 in the ratings about a million viewers um, which for football when you compare it to the NFL and college major college football is not great, obviously, but you know who was expecting that? When you compare it to other sports, it's starting to look pretty good, and it does show you that there's an appetite for spring football in the United States. And so I think The Rock is doing something right here. I think he is, he understands that there is a large chunk of devoted fans that will watch the XFL. I count myself among them, even though when it first started, I was a little skeptical about it. But you can go back and take a look at all of my videos that I made about the XFL, specifically the one uh, 
after the XFL's first weekend of play of all the things that I really liked. And, and I love the XFL. I really hope that, that it does come back. But the reason that this video is titled the way it is is because the more that I think about what this could mean, the more I get excited about what The Rock as the creative vision, not that he's going to be, you know, in the front office and, and, you know, in the league office every day. I mean, he's a busy man, obviously. Um, but just as, as a visionary, what he could actually bring to the table. Because here's the thing. If you watch wrestling, if you watch specifically the WWE, you know that it's been a, a running joke for a long time. That Vince McMahon is very, very quickly losing touch with reality. Um, not that he's, you know... Not, not in like a mental illness kind of way, just he's really old and he doesn't really understand the core demographic, right? The, the 18 to 34 demographic, which is key uh, to any type of new venture starting like this. And even though he's not involved in the day-to-day -day business, of certainly of the XFL, that kind of vision that does shape things right I mean I mean we've all had a boss that you know isn't necessarily involved day to day but the people he hires and the general business decisions he makes these types of things that can really affect your day to day work even if you don't actually see the boss all the time even even if he's not actually there you know that that boss can can affect your day to day work and that's what I that's what I was worried about with Vince McMahon in the XFL. I don't think it happened because, I mean, the, the the product on the field was really great. But the idea that Vince obviously looked at this as an investment that he was willing to dump if he needed to, and then when the time when the time came, he dumped it. I I, I don't. Th it doesn't seem to me like The Rock is really going to take that route with it. It, does, it seems like he's more passionate about the game of football, about bringing this to the table than Vince was. Um, that's just complete speculation. But the reason that makes me excited is because when you have a visionary at the top who really cares about what's going on, the type of people that he can bring in, the, the new attitude that he can bring in, that can mean a lot. You know, from, from the top of the XFL down to you know the equipment managers of the teams if you feel that energy that the person at the top really cares about you um, that can really invigorate everything and so what we know right now is we're basically back to a blank slate at this point I mean I think uh, it's been said that no one really expects um, this is in the Bleacher Report article it's uh, I'll give you a quote uh, it is not believed that existing television contracts with ESPN slash ABC and Fox will be honored though that could change. So what we're saying is we don't know what the TV deals are going to be like. Obviously, there were multiple season deals with ESPN and Fox, um, so we don't know if those are going to be honored. I mean, we don't really know anything other than the XFL hopefully will now be bailed out of their potential bankruptcy. I mean, they are in bankruptcy court right now, so they'll be bailed out of that, and uh, they can kind of start fresh. And so when we say starting fresh, let's think about for us. I mean, I am 24 years old. I am squarely in the demographic that everyone is looking for when it comes to TV viewers, when it comes to uh, internet viewership. I mean, I am the buying demographic. So what would I want out of the XFL? Well, first of all, I want a video game. <laughs> Just personally, that would be number one. Um, and uh, I think, again, The Rock with a more kind of forward thinking mind and with the people around him, uh, could he be looking at a video game to try to get the word of the XFL out there? I think it's certainly a possibility and I would be absolutely hyped to be able to play that even if it's just like if they just release a $20 game where all you can do is play single games, even that, I'd be cool with that if they want to do it. So uh, I do think that's a possibility and that gets me excited. Uh, when it comes to league expansion, I think when you are a little bit more kind of forward thinking, you start to think of more of the possibilities. So what I mean by that is the NFL has always had the idea that we are going to play in the biggest cities in in the country and we are going to dominate the sports in those cities. And when you look at it, it's true because you can go all the way to LA, New York, Chicago, and what do you have? You have 
you know, the Giants, and you have now the Chargers and the Raiders. Well, not the Raiders anymore, but the Chargers in LA. And then in Chicago, you have the Bears. You've got huge, huge brands in the game of football that are now there with the Rams in LA as well. That was the NFL's whole deal. Dallas, Denver, Seattle. I mean, the biggest cities in the country, that's where the NFL is. And if you're kind of an old school type of guy, you're kind of thinking, okay, well, we, we want to be in big cities because that's the conventional wisdom. Big cities equals more people equals more people to go to our games. And to an extent, that's kind of true when you look at the teams in the XFL. But if you get a newer mind in there that's not so much attached to that kind of old school thinking, then maybe the, the thought process becomes, why don't we go to cities that have rabid fan bases that don't have professional sports? Let's go there and you know try to try to pick those fans off and make them very passionate XFL fans. It's similar to kind of what the MLS is doing a little bit, just in terms of we need to build a passionate fan base and then build ourselves up. And the game of football obviously has a much bigger built-in fan base than the game of soccer. So uh, is that on the table? I think I think it might be. And I just think that would be a lot of fun because passionate fans, I mean, if you watch college sports, you know that it's some of the smallest towns, uh, some of the smallest cities that have the most rabid, passionate fans. Um, you know, I mean, if you look at college football, who goes to College Station, Texas, other than to go to Texas A&M? But here are some of the rowdiest fans in the country. Lawrence, Kansas, when it comes to college basketball. I mean, that's just how it is. Um, and so I, I think that, you know, New Vision might lead the XFL to examine newer markets and, and bring in that really passionate fan base. And then, you know, let's, let's address kind of the elephant in the room here. The Rock is one of the biggest stars, if not the biggest star on the planet. He's got connections. You know, when it comes to when it comes to building something that becomes part of the, you know, public consciousness. If you look at even the development of the NFL, what has made the NFL the biggest brand in sports, at least in the United States? Well, you can go back to guys that became crossover stars, guys that even people who weren't football fans really knew. And I'm thinking, you know, Jim Brown, Joe Namath, O.J. Simpson, like guys that were really big. And I mean O.J. before the trial. I mean O.J. Simpson when he was, you know, starring in The Naked Gun and stuff like that. Um, that's how you become part of the collective consciousness. Now, The Rock is very familiar with that because The Rock worked in WWE. And if you're not familiar with how WWE became the premier wrestling co uh, company in the world, it's because in the 80s, they made the decision to attach themselves to big time celebrities. So they had, you know, celebrities like Joan Jett and, and they, I mean, if you just, I mean, let me show you, I'll just show you a few pictures of celebrities that Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage were hanging out with. That's how WWE became a public name because even if you didn't know about wrestling, you still knew what WWE was because of all this. Now, from The Rock's perspective, I think he knows that better than anybody because The Rock was part of WWE when it was the when it was at its most successful in the late 90s. He knows about, you know, guys like Mike Tyson getting involved, right? He knows what that is to bring in real star power to increase the name of a brand. I think that he could be looking at the XFL right now and say, we have an opportunity. The NFL is the old guard, right? Because the NFL now has crossed over, okay? NFL players are big time stars already, right? It's it's about essentially crossing back over into, into you know, the mainstream. The NFL is already there. What The Rock could be looking at doing is saying the XFL now is going to take the mantle of that sports brand that is not part of the mainstream we are going to attach ourselves to these kinds of celebrities maybe it's other athletes whoever it may be and we're going to put ourselves into the public consciousness without competing with the nfl that's that's definitely key the nfl is not going to stand for competition we've talked about that in a previous video without competing with the nfl can you attach yourself to big names and become part of the public consciousness again if anyone knows how to you know take take star power that you already have and then parlay that onto other people and become a big star it's the rock who at one point was the most hated man in all of pro wrestling and now he's one of the most beloved actors in hollywood one of the richest men on the planet 
And again, who knows better than him how to actually make that happen, even from uh, the league perspective. Now, again, do I think The Rock is going to be sitting in the boardroom, making every decision, you know, writing down on every uh, on every piece of paper, signing off on every check? No, no, I don't think that. But again, that, that visionary leadership is so important. That's what can really draw people in. Uh, and I think that just from what I've seen, and we don't know much, but from what I've seen, The Rock has that kind of visionary leadership. He he believes that the XFL is worth keeping around, that people will enjoy it. The fans deserve something like the XFL to take us away from, you know, now the, the, the all-encompassing NFL. Um, just something a little bit different. And the XFL, when it was running, certainly was that. And I, it looks like The Rock is going to uh, keep it that. So, uh, I'm really excited. If you are, then please let me know. If you're not, let me know why. You know, if you're if you're pessimistic about this, I totally understand that, given the history of the XFL. So let me know in the comments. Either way, uh, you know we always have conversations with whoever's in the comments. So we really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.